What? Forgot something? Oh, to make that hose reach under there, yeah, yeah. That fucking steel line. <sighs> hey guys, how's she going today? Well, I started some of the painting on the old bird here. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I know a few of you had kind of asked me to uh, show you what I do to prep things for paint. So this might be kind of a multi-episode uh, kind of a series on how things get painted. I, I started some of these little things here already. But the bulk of the tractor, I'll make sure I video all that. This goddamn strip foam. They sure don't make this stuff as good as they used to. It doesn't stick worth a shit anymore. Anyways, when you set the fuel tank on it, it won't go anywhere. But anyways, back to what we were talking about, painting. So, I got, uh, well, I'll just start with each little piece and I'll tell you what it is and kind of what we did, but this is the, uh, the air cleaner, where, where your air cleaner goes, and that's the bracket for it. And you say, well, why is it painted construction yellow? Well, originally these tractors came with an oil bath and Grandpa updated that. And that came from an industrial, and you know how rare 5010, 5020s are to begin with. There's even less that are industrial. So I figured since these pieces come off as of something so rare, it might be kind of neat to keep them their proper color. So I painted them uh, construction yellow. And it's not like it's really going to affect how things look because it's going to be hidden behind the screen. You're only going to see it when you open it up, but. I figured I'd preserve its history of what they are or where they're from. Because, I mean, each different piece on this tractor kind of tells a story of its life. So, I figured I'd keep them yellow so you know that it come from an industrial. So, there's the story behind them. And uh, it had a couple real bad rust spots in it. And I tried to MIG weld it and the, everything. It's just so thin it was just blowing holes in it. So, that's... Uh, just good old JB Weld, and I just put a couple of gobs on it, and you're never ever gonna see that anyways, because it's gonna be upside down and facing in underneath the tractor. So I figured a couple little gobs like that's better than the big rust fucking holes in it, and they're not gonna come back now with that covering it. Because we uh, ground it right down to bare metal. And then uh, after that was patched, I take uh, sandpaper. Where is my sandpaper? Uh, over here. <laughs> well, there's just pieces of it. This is uh, 100 grit sandpaper. And I use that first on everything. I hand sand the whole tractor down. I'll use uh, the little rubber brick like that or the power sander. And I sand the entire tractor down, every inch of it, with 100 grit. And then I go back over it with, I've got some other stuff here. I should have found it before I started the video maybe, because I don't know where it is. <laughs> oh, right there, it's a piece of it. 220 grit. And I go over it with this after. This is a real fine, a lot finer than what the other sandpaper is. And that just makes it silky smooth after. And a real nice, uh, makes a real nice base for the paint to stick to. So I sanded it like that, and then if it's something that was uh, oily or, you know, had, seemed like it had some sort of a film on it, I wash it down with uh, break and parts clean, uh, chlorinated stuff, and wipe it down with a rag, and then it's usually nothing left on there to fuck with the paint. And then anything that's normal, like the fenders and whatnot, I'll just wash it down with water after. As you can see, like this has all been sanded, but there's uh, quite a bit of dust yet, even though I wiped it with a dry rag. But So that's how I uh, sand them. And it was the same thing for the PTO shield. I've got it painted, and it's just, uh, I've just been using rattle cans for these little pieces because it's not worth uh, making the whole shop stink for one thing that's gonna be that different yellow. And then I'll use the big gun for the rims and 
the rest of the big green stuff. But the littler stuff, it's just easier to use the can. So I've got four coats. I prime underneath of it with uh, red primer. Over there it is. <laughs> Maybe one day before I start a video, I'll have myself organized. But I prime it like with this when it's the stuff that's going to be rattle canned and because uh, I mean the John Deere spray paint in the spray can I you know, it needs primer underneath of it I found it doesn't stick where the shit otherwise but when you're painting it on with the big gun the only spots I'll prime are where it's real rusty I'll prime that but the rest of it like the 895 that paint is so good it's the uh, primer and everything all together so you can just shoot your paint on and you're laughing so but like i said i do the little parts a little different than what i do the bulk of the tractor and then these shields here we made these dad made them in the press and you'll see them on there after but that's uh 14 gauge sheet metal and we got our uh, one neighbor to cut it with his big shear. And uh, he's the guy who sold the metal to us. And then that piping is steel hydraulic pipe from that 1682 that got cut all apart for the bulldozer. And dad made his little jig in the hydraulic press. And those are going to go on, like you can see the shape. They're going to go on here and be about flush with the... Uh, dash cover they'll be about that high all the way across just like how the 4020 is so and then uh, yeah i primed them sanded them they were just bare metal but i still sanded them took off the bit of rust that was on them and then uh, give them a shot of primer and then they're on their third coat of green paint and i'm probably going to leave it at three coats I don't think it needs any more. And then uh, somewhere over here in my collection of painting things, I've got this stuff. Clear coat. And I'll shoot that on a, well, one or two coats on those little pieces in that can like that. And then uh, I've never actually painted an entire tractor and covered it with clear coat after. So I might try it on this one. We'll see if I've got time or not. I've never played with it like that. I've only ever done like the littler pieces with the clear coat. And I mean, you can't really tell the difference yet. I mean, this paint job's only a year old on this tractor, but all these little pieces here, I clear coated because I'd done them with the rattle can, but then the main part of the tractor never had any. And I mean, you can't really see a difference so anyway I'm going to uh, continue sanding and I'll talk to you guys again here in a little bit later on hopefully I've got some more parts and a little bit more done and I'll uh, wrap this up and everything will be dry and maybe I can uh, get the fuel tank on there I'd like to sand and paint and prime it so when I do it I will video how I how I prep it and get it ready to go on so uh, I'll talk to you again here in a little bit okay it took me a few minutes to figure out how I was gonna make this big brown bastard sit up the way I wanted it to and the answer was right in front of me so <laughs> anyway I kind of started sanding it and this paint holy Christ you hit her with the rough stuff there and fucking takes her right down to bare metal and I don't really need it down to bare metal so I'm not going to be too aggressive with it. I'm just trying to get this uh, blacker stuff off. I mean, it's just a fuel tank under the hood. So it's not like a guy's going to be uh, looking too close at it. Or feeling how soft the paint is on the fuel tank. So Anyway, you can see there, just a quick sanding with that. And it's got most of that shit off of it. So I'm going to sand the whole tank. And then uh, I will uh, show you washing it down. And she'll be ready for primer. So I'll talk to you again here in about 
half an hour. <laughs> all right, so it's all sanded and cleaned off and ready for some primer. So I'll just, I'll try to do a little bit here with the camera. And like I said, I just kind of use the rattle cans on the not so important pieces like the fuel tank like this and the air filter and shit that you're not really gonna see all the time. And then the bulk of the tractor is at the big gun. And this is just easier like this than uh, dicking around setting the gun up to do all these little jobs. But anyway, I'm not going to do the whole thing Can't videoing. I thought I would be like the uh, baking shows and all right, now you put it in the oven and then they magically pull out the done side. So there's what she looks like when it's all primed and dried. So I'm going to uh, finish up that other side, let it dry, and then we'll hit her with some green paint. So and I'll talk to you again in another 20-ish minutes. <laughs> anyway, I got it painted and I stuck her in place there with Dad. And uh, we put these straps on to try and suck her down a little bit. Because that foam was pretty thick. Yeah, but then with a bit of pressure on it, it'll squish down now at least. So I went and scuffed my paint up a little wee bit with the straps, but... I'll uh, I'll just touch it all up like you don't even see that anyways it's under the hood and everything so not a big deal if it's not 100% perfect but still better than it was <laughs> anyway so that's that sanded prime painted you kind of seen how I do things now but I'll do uh, kind of the same deal when I do the rest of the tractor here but anyway Dad and I started taping the tires off. I'm the faster tire taper because I've got mine all done. He's only half, so. <laughs> anyway, I guess. The paint has started and I'll keep plugging away at her and another video will be coming shortly on something. Maybe not this, maybe it, but anyway, one way or another, I guess. Hit the like button, subscribe for more. We'll talk to you guys later.